classify it and we're going to classify it both structurally and functionally. So when we are classifying it structurally we have three choices. It is either a pseudo unipolar neuron, a bipolar neuron, or a multipolar neuron. A pseudo unipolar neuron just has one process that goes both in and out of the cell body. A bipolar neuron has two processes and a multipolar neuron has many processes. And as we can see, we have our cell body, we have one long process here, and then we have numerous other processes coming out of the cell body or going into the cell body. The, so therefore, this is a multipolar neuron. When classifying this functionally, we have to take a look at what this neuron actually does. Since it's a multipolar neuron, then the cell body must be within the central nervous system. But if we look at the axon here, we can see that the axon is myelinated with these cells here that are called Schwann cells. And Schwann cells only myelinate axons in the peripheral nervous system. So that must make this a lower motor neuron with the cell body residing in the anterior gray horn and the axon extending into the peripheral nervous system to activate a skeletal muscle cell. When looking at the cell body here, we can see we have many dendrites that are bringing information in. We also have these parts here, which are the axon terminals from other axons that are feeding input into this cell body. This part here is the axon terminal, and then at the end of it, we have the presynaptic synaptic end bulb. And there is actually, in life, there's a little gap here, and the communication is done by the release of neurotransmitters. If we look inside the cell body, we can see we have these structures here that look like rough ER, but in a neuron, they have a special name. They're called nissel bodies or chromophilic substances. We can also see here that we have the Golgi apparatus and we have some smooth ER and then in the middle, of course, we have the nucleus. As we move further towards the axon, we have the axon hillock or the trigger zone here and then the axon leads off. These cells that are myelinating it are called Schwann cells, and we can see two Schwann cells here, and there is a small gap between the Schwann cells called the node of Renvier, or the neural fibril nodes. The outermost layer of the Schwann cell is called the neur neurolemma, and as it wraps around the axon, the nucleus and the cytoplasm all get squashed into the outer layer. And then here we can see that we have uh, connective tissue covering around the axon, and this is called an endoneurium. When this neuron cell body here is influenced by different signals that are coming in, those cause great graded potentials, which if they get to the axon hillock or the trigger zone here, and it reaches the threshold potential, an action potential is sent down the axon, and this is an all or nothing, and you get depolarization at the nodes, which cause a depolarization further down and further down to all the way to the end of the axon. If the Schwann cells were not myelinating it, then you would get what is called continuous conduction, where you would get a depolarization here, a depolarization here, a depolarization all the way down, which is a lot slower than a myelinated axon that, that conducts the impulse through saltatory conduction with depolarization here, depolarization here, depolarization here. Yeah.